Novartis vs. Indian Patent Act. It was a landmark decision by a two-judge bench of the Indian Supreme Court on the issue of whether Novartis could patent Blivik, which is a natamib, sold under the brand names Blivik, as a chemotherapy medication used to treat cancer. The Supreme Court upheld the Indian Patent Office's rejection of the patent application. Summary of the case The total duration of this case was 16 years, if we consider from 1997 when Novartis filed patent application for Blivik. In 2005 India had a new patent law and the patent controller has denied the patent in Novartis in 2006 what has filed an application in Madras High Court. Then in 2007 High Court rejected plea by Novartis and in 2009 Novartis went for Supreme Court and in 2013 on the 1st of April the Supreme Court rejected the plea. Let us see what this transition and history of Indian patent law. After gaining independence in 1947, there was a growing consensus that the boost manufacturing restrictive product patents must be temporarily removed. In 1970, amendments to the Indian Patents Act abolished product patents, but retained process patents with a reduced span of protection. The patent application at the center of the case was filed by Novartis in India in 1998, after India had agreed to enter the World Trade Organization and to abide by worldwide intellectual property standards under the TRIPS agreement. As part of this agreement, India made changes to its patent law, the biggest of which was that prior to these changes, patents on products were not allowed, while afterwards they were, albeit with restrictions. These changes came into effect in 2005, so Novartis patent application waited in a mailbox with others until then, under procedures that India instituted to manage the transition. India also passed certain amendments to its patent law in 2005, just before the laws came into effect, which played a key role in the rejection of the patent application. Arguments before the Supreme Court Novartis the legal team of Novartis was led by ex-Solicitor General of India Gopal Subramaniam and Senior Advocate T.R. and Dairina. Novartis had attempted to patent imatinib mycilid in beta-crystalline form rather than imatinib or imatinib mycilid. Thus they sought to prevent extant literature on imatinib or imatinib mycilid from being considered as prior art. The thrust of the arguments by Novartis' legal team was twofold. Firstly, that the Zimmerman patents in the journal articles published by Zimmerman et al do not constitute prior art for the beta-crystalline form as it is only one polymorph of imatinib mycilate, thereby providing the required novelty and inventive step. And secondly, that imatinib mycilate in beta-crystalline form has enhanced efficacy over imatinib or imatinib mycilate to pass the test of Section 3rd. Supreme Court Decision Supreme Court decided the matter de novo looking into matters of both fact and law. The court first analyzed the question of prior art by looking into Zimmerman patent and the related academic publications. It was clear from the Zimmerman patent that imatinib mycilate itself was not new and did not qualify the test of invention as laid down in Section 21J and Section 21 of the Patents Act, 1970. The court then examined the beta-crystalline form of imatinib mycilate and wrote that it, for the sake of argument, may be accepted to be new in the sense that it is not known from the Zimmerman patent. Whether or not it involves an inventive step is another matter, and there is no need to go into that aspect of the matter now. Now, the beta-crystalline form of imatinib mycilate being a pharmaceutical substance, and moreover a polymorph of imatinib mycilate, it directly... Court acknowledged that physical efficacy of imatinib mycilate in beta-crystalline form is enhanced in comparison to other forms, and that the beta-crystalline form of imatinib mycilate has 30 per cent increased bioavailability as compared to imatinib in free base form. However, as no material had been offered to indicate that the beta-crystalline form of imatinib mycilate will produce an enhanced or superior efficacy therapeutic on molecular basis than what could be Achieved with imatinib free base in vivo animal model, the court opined that the beta crystalline form of imatinib mycilate does not qualify the test of Section 3rd. Reception of Court Ruling The decision received extensive coverage from Indian and international media. It reignited debates on balancing public good with monopolistic pricing and innovation with affordability. 
Several commenters, including Novartis, noted that the decision either way would not have affected the ability of generics companies in India to continue selling generic Blyavik. The new patent law India adopted in 2005 contains a grandfather clause that allows generic copies of drugs launched before 2005, which Ranjit Chahani, Vice Chairman and Managing Director of Novartis India Limited is quoted as saying, this ruling is a setback for patients that will hinder medical progress for diseases without effective treatment options. He also said that companies like Novartis would invest less money in research in India as a result of the ruling. Novartis also emphasized that it continues to be committed to access to its drugs. According to Novartis, by 2013, 95% of patients in India early 16, 000 P. Opler received Glivic free of charge and it has provided more than 1.7 billion worth of Blivik to Indian patients in its support program since it was started. The New York Times quoted Chip Davis, the executive vice president of advocacy at the Pharmaceutical Research and Manufacturers of America, the industry trade group. It really is in our view another example of what I would characterize as a deteriorating innovation environment in India. The Indian government and the Indian courts have come down on the side that doesn't recognize the value of innovation and the value of strong intellectual property, which we believe is essential.